Hey, brother. Oh my god, Jay, look what we got at Disneyland. So cute. Can I help you? Hey, brother! Great news! We got two, and we're giving one away, so just stick around till the end of the video to find out how you can enter. So recently you may have heard a theory that Dory is actually faking her memory loss. While we completely disagree, it is kind of an interesting theory if you want to check it out somewhere up here after watching this video. Finding Dory did do a great job at answering a lot of questions we had about Dory's origin, but it didn't really address specifically how she got the memory loss. She says in Finding Nemo, It runs in my family. Well, I mean, at least I think it does. But now having met her family, obviously it doesn't. As far as we can tell, it seems like she was just born with it, which you might think is plenty enough explanation, but we actually think there's a little bit more to it than that. So today we are going to explore why she suffers from short-term memory loss, and it actually all begins with moose. No, not that moose. This moose! Moose is our parents' extremely appropriately named Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. Say hi, moose. Moose, unfortunately, was born without tear ducts, which just makes me want to cry because it's the one thing he can't do. Also means we constantly have to put drops in his eyes so they don't dry out. The condition is a result of selective breeding, which is all too common amongst purebred dogs. As a kid, I think I always found myself wondering what like a wild Yorkshire Terrier would look like. Like, how do they survive? What do they hunt? Do they tie their own bows? As an adult, I now realize there is no such thing as a wild Yorkshire Terrier. They are kind of created by humans through selective breeding. Meaning it's not always the strongest genes that survive, but the ones that have the shiniest hair genes or the cute genes. I'm actually wearing cute jeans right now. These would never survive in the wild, but don't worry, they were a rescue. Right, Dory? I'm getting there. Interestingly, we can actually take our dog example and apply it to fish, with one of the best examples being clownfish. Unlike dogs where breeding and captivity can be frowned upon, it's actually very supportive when it comes to fish because it means there's so much less collection and pressure on the actual reefs. There's an entire video in the card somewhere. However, despite being a highly regarded practice and generally a good thing, it does come with certain complications. For example, clownfish breeders were originally trying to breed the perfect three-striped clown. One Two, three, that's all I have. But occasionally they would end up with these blotchy white clownfish that in the early days were actually culled. Which means all drains lead to the ocean. They don't. Fortunately for clownfish though, these blotchy rejects eventually became known as designer clownfish. Often referred to as Picassos or snowflakes, they became extremely popular variations of the standard three-striped clown. But it is very important to clarify that these clowns are not the result of biologists carefully honing in on specific cute genes like we saw with dogs or by genes. It's actually a rare mutation sparked by imperfections in the water during breeding. Imperfections that are simply not found in the clownfish's natural habitat. The fact is you just can't recreate the ocean, and as a result there are always going to be some imperfections when it comes to breeding. Not that you aren't perfect, moose. And if you're wondering why I'm using clownfish for the example and not tangs, it's because clownfish are relatively easy to breed, especially when it comes to breeding breeding hippo tanks. I would give you an example of that, but I actually can't because it has not yet been done in captivity. In fact, it's mostly considered impossible for surgeon fish in general to breed in captivity. And I say almost because the only place it has ever happened is in the Oceanic Institute in Hawaii. Sound familiar? Marine Life Institute? And even then, it wasn't hippo tangs, it was yellow tangs. In fact, if you want to see an entire video about breeding yellow tangs, our dad, of all people, has an amazing video about it. You can click the card somewhere up there. And that finally brings us to Dory. Against all odds and all the information we just gave you was successfully bred in captivity. I mean all odds. Do you have any idea how many eggs a female hippo tang has? 40,000! And yet only one survives? That's a 0.0025% success rate. Dory is 
a freaking miracle. For her to be alive at all is impressive, but to expect her to get through that entire process with no complications is frankly unbelievable. To me, that being bred in captivity in a place where she should not have survived is the best explanation for Dory's memory loss. It's worth noting that in the movie we meet every single hippo tang that is being held in the Marine Life Institute, and if you notice, there are no other children. If the other hippo tangs in the Institute were able to have children, you'd think we'd see at least a few middle to small sized ones. In one of her flashbacks, we do see some smaller hippo tangs that Dory wants to go play with, but even those are much larger than baby Dory. And those look like they would fall well within a safe collection size, which is a rule that I have a feeling the Marine Life Institute would respect. So yeah, boom. Hashtag Dory is a miracle. Let us know if you agree in the towel section down below. Also yesterday we hit 700,000 subscribers. I cannot thank you guys enough for tuning in and subscribing to the show. We have been growing so fast lately and we would love to be able to produce more and better content for you guys. So just today we are launching a Patreon for Super Carlin Brothers. So if you would like a way to get more involved with the growth and expansion of Super Carlin Brothers and take advantage of some really cool perks like bonus content or possibly getting to sit in with us on a Google Hangout, be sure to check us out at patreon.com backslash Super Carlin Brothers. And again, I would like to emphasize this in no way means that you will ever have to pay for our content, but if you would like to help support the show, this is just one way that you can do so. Okay, so how to win this adorable baby Dory plush? Super easy, all you have to do is go to J and I Instagram page, follow both of us, and find Dory, aka like the picture of us holding baby Dory. Links for our Instagram and Patreon are going to be in the description down below. If you'd like to see more information on yellow tang breeding, you can click this video right here. If you'd like to see more about how finding Dory fits into the Pixar theory, you can click right here. But Jay, that is everything that I've got for you today, man. I will see you on Tuesday.